Working for Diddy for six years trained me to have to be perfect. Working 20... for Diddy? Absolutely. I love Diddy. I don't want to answer that oh, question. Oh, well, I, I think he's a good guy. I'm going to stick up for him. Today we are going to talk about PDD's arrest and crimes allegations. We're also going to talk about how many people in Hollywood could be linked to his alleged crimes, how many A-list celebrities are tied to what is happening and if this could have an impact on the star system. I really didn't plan on making this video, I started to write this yesterday, but this story is so intense and so serious that I think everyone should have at least a basic understanding of what is going on. As someone who aspires to do music, I have to admit that these level of perversions that are going on in like A-list circles is really scary, especially the kinds of things that are happening in the music industry, as we're going to see with the extreme example of PDD and the allegations against him. I know that many small musicians like me are asking themselves these questions, I've seen this going on on TikTok. Can you even be part of the music industry without taking part or being a victim of this at some level? And we're going to talk about it through the example of Shan Combs aka PDD. Before we start this video, I want to give a huge trigger warning in this video. I am going to be talking about topics of assault, sexual assault, rape, battery, revenge porn, and many other serious and disturbing topics. So if you don't feel like you can handle that, I highly recommend you go watch another video. Throughout this video, I invite you to share your opinion on the topic in the comments, but please stay respectful. If you are not respectful with the alleged victims coming forward, I will delete your comments. All of the sources that I used for this video will be linked in the description. This is going to include all of the core documents of the ongoing lawsuits against Sean Combs. So if you want to go read them to have more details about what exactly he is accused of, you can go check out these documents, but they are very disturbing, so be careful. I'm your host Leo, I talk about musicians, their career, their albums or music genres, I do music reactions, so if this seems like your thing, you can follow me and activate the bell to support my channel. This would make me very happy. <laughs> I have many other videos that you can go watch if the topic of this one is too serious for you, you can go on my channel. I'm pretty certain everyone knows who I am talking about here, but for the younger people who might not know who Sean Combs is, I want to give a little recap. Sean Combs is known mostly as P. Diddy, but he also has other names like Puff Daddy, Puffy, DD. He is currently 54, he was born in 1969 and he gained popularity in the 90s. This is when he started making music and working as a music executive. He's made six albums of his own and he has produced music for musicians like Mariah Carey, Jay-Z, Jennifer Lopez or R. Kelly, which is on brand, we're not gonna lie. He has produced music for most of the artists that he had signed under his record label Bad Boy Records, a label that he launched in 1993 at only 24. He also has a lot of side businesses, he has launched his men fashion brand, he has invested in art, he also had two restaurants at some point. The one thing that you have to remember about P. Diddy, if you didn't know him, is that he is, and he especially was, one of the most influential figures in the music industry, especially especially in the hip-hop, R&B and rap scene, especially in the United States, and also that he is filthy rich. And as we've seen many times in history, rich and powerful men can tend to be a little comfortable with other human beings. You're going to see in this video, I have a lot of rage and disgust around this topic, but I'm going to try to contain it to just like stick to the facts. So given his reputation and his history in the music industry, it came without surprise that in September 2023, he received the Global Icon Awards at the MTV VMAs, which is insane because that's shortly after that, that everything started falling down for him and all his alleged victims came forward. The last side note regarding who PDD is, is that he went to Catholic school. So if everything that we are seeing is true, it is funny. I've watched a lot of videos and stuff about him and I remember there are some instances where 
you see him talk about the fact that he would confide to a priest before taking some decisions. The sheer hypocrisy of it baffles me. I'm pretty sure that if everything that is told right now is true, he wouldn't have been talking about it to his priest, but just the sheer hypocrisy of these A-list rich celebrity of allegedly doing awful things, but still like going to the priest to, I don't know, make sure they might go to paradise. I don't know. It's crazy to me. This is a pure judgment of character on my side here. I am staying away from the facts, just a judgment, but come on. Oh my God. Okay. Now, why are we talking about PDD? Why is everyone talking about PDD? Before I start talking about all of this, I want to state that everything that I'm going to talk about in this video is relating to ongoing legal cases and lawsuits. So all the actions that I am going to talk about are still alleged legally. I have my personal opinion on the matter, but I can't state the elements of this story and these allegations as fact. So remember that until court settled the ongoing lawsuits of Sean Combs, everything that I'm going to talk about in this video is alleged. Now, why are we talking about PDD? We're talking about him because he got arrested in September. He got arrested following a very long list of lawsuits against him. And all of these has had a lot of people come forward with allegations against him. And what we are talking about here includes assault, sex trafficking, racketing, gang rape, rape, physical violence, bribery, threats, revenge porn. And all of these allegations are coming from a diversity of women, men and people who were minor at the time. And he's also accused of threatening and coercing people to stay silent on his actions, dodging the blame on others or buying their silence. All of these to protect his reputation from all of these extremely serious and disturbing allegations. And you're going to see these excuse from him come up a lot, but several times answering these allegations, he has used the excuse of these people accusing him in order to get money. This came back a few times. And I don't think that it is surprising that in a patriarchal system, men with power could get crazy and conduct such actions against others. I read most of the court documents. I didn't read everything because it's too disturbing, but I've read what people are accusing him of and it is so disturbing. We are going to talk about these court documents in a minute because I'm going to detail all of the ongoing lawsuits against him. But the number and diversity of accusations is crazy. Also the baby oil, the baby oil, man. Two of his property were raided and they allegedly found more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and 700 sex toys. It's not that I'm a prude, but one thing that you are going to see everywhere in the articles mentioning him, his arrest, and the allegations against him is the freak of parties that he would throw. If you watch interviews of people talking about PDD, one thing that is always coming back is the fact that he was throwing crazy parties. And apparently it was known for a long time, but it is only coming out now how crazy and dangerous these parties could be. Some people are describing these parties as Sean Combs' own artistic projects, where he would even like pay attention to the light and set up candles and of course he would film everything which is crazy when you know what is going down at these parties. These parties are described as violent. Several people that filed lawsuits against Sean accused him of forcing them to have sex with sex workers for his own pleasure. All of these under the influence of drugs as ecstasy, GHB, or ketamine. People are coming forward saying that he would masturbate to that. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to post this video because like I'm using so many crazy keywords right now. I really hope that I can still post this, but yeah, this is very disturbing. And people are saying that when he wasn't obtaining what he wanted, he would become physically violent with people. And as I said, he would film people without their consent and later 
a lot of people have come forward saying that he would use the material he filmed in order to blackmail people. Apparently, some people left these parties so tired that they would need to be administrated fluids intravenously to recover. Now that you have a general idea of the things that Shan Combs could do, we are going to talk about the lawsuits that have been filed against him. And you're going to see that we have a crazy number of them that have been piling up since November 2023. As I said, I have read parts of these legal documents, not everything because it's too disturbing for me. I couldn't go into details, but I wanted to make sure that I was reporting the allegations and accusations right. The lawsuit that prompted all of the following lawsuits that are going on right now is the one of Cassie Ventura. Cassie Ventura was the partner of Sean Calm from 2007 to 2018. He signed her under his label when she was 19 and he was 37. He signed her for a contract of 10 albums, which is insane. You're going to see so many footages of them together. Like on the outside, it really seemed like they were a normal celebrity couple. But when you see what is involved in the lawsuit that Cassie filed, it is honestly chilling. Because if 2024 is starting to look like the year of the downfall of PDD, it is all thanks to the courage of Cassie Ventura for coming forward. Something that you have to know about this lawsuit is that it was settled in 24 hours and it was the first time that PDD took it to social media to apologize a few months later about the whole affair. In the lawsuit that Cassie Ventura filed on November 16, 2023, she accuses him of years of abuse and one instance of rape. Her attorney reports in the documents that she allegedly endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands, included repeated beatings and forcing her to engage in sex acts with male sex workers. And she also alleges that PDD blew up Kit Cuddy's car after she took refuge in his house to escape DD for some time and because he was romantically interested in her. The day after the lawsuit was filed, they agreed to a settlement, but the details are private and the amount is undisclosed. Cassie's attorney issued a statement in which she said, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans and lawyers for their unwavering support. Cassie's lawyer also claims that Sean Combs offered her eight figures to prevent her from filing the lawsuit in the first place, but she refused. I never want to hear anybody say again that women are filing a lawsuit for money. Men put money on the table to protect themselves. That's it. So all of this happened in November 2023, but on May 17th, 2024, the surveillance footage of him assaulting her at a hotel was obtained and shared by CNN. So this put a whole new light on the lawsuit and the story. I don't want to show the clip because I find it disturbing, but basically in it you see Sean Combe running through the hotel with just a towel around his waist and shoving Cassie to the ground. He kicks her and drags her down the hallway. And uh, later you see him sitting on a chair and throwing something at her. So yeah, it's a very disturbing footage, but basically even though the lawsuit was settled between them, it was now proof that he had been violent and the public could no longer ignore that. There also is the question of why this footage was like disappeared for so long. And it is alleged that he would have paid the hotel to make sure that this surveillance footage would not be seen by anyone. I don't know how CNN got it, honestly. So now Cassie is remarried and her, her husband shared a note on Instagram saying men who hit women aren't men. It's nice to know that now she has a new husband and she has a support system. <sighs> After this footage was publicized, we had the first instance of Sean Combe apologizing for what he did. This is, I, I really think it's the first time that we see him apologizing, which is crazy. He apologized on May 19th. So this was after so many lawsuits had already been filed against him. And now there was this public footage. So I think him like posting this video was an indicator 
that he and his team were aware that a downfall could be near. I'm just gonna show you the video of him apologizing and then we're going to talk about all of the others ongoing lawsuits against him. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. But sometimes you gotta do that. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. Had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. I'm just like, give me a break, you know? <laughs> so now that we have talked about almost everything regarding the first lawsuit that was filed against Sean Combs, we are going to talk about the second one. On November 23rd, 2023, we had two lawsuits filed against Sean Combs. First one was filed by Lisa Gardner and she filed a lawsuit against Sean Combs for a battery assault, sexual assault, and negligent infliction of emotional distress. The second one was filed by Joy Dickerson Neal. She accuses Sean Combs of drugging and sexually assaulting her when she was a college student in 1991, and that he had a footage of him assaulting her that he distributed to other people in the music industry. Filed a lawsuit for assault, battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, sex trafficking, revenge porn, all under New York's jurisdiction. Following these three lawsuits, at the end of November, he stepped down as chairman of his TV network that he co-funded, Revolt. And you'll see that later on, he is even stepping further from his business because in June 2024, he sold all his share in the company. Fourth lawsuit that was filed against Sean Combs happened on December 6th. From what I've seen in the documents, and I think that this didn't change, but the person who filed the lawsuit remained anonymous. So this Jane Doe filed a lawsuit alleging that at 17, she was gang raped and sex traffic by Sean Combs. And she is also accusing Harvey Pierre, who was the former president of Bad Boys Records. In March 2024, Sean Combs asked a federal judge to dismiss this lawsuit, stating that the claims are false and hideous and that the case was filed too late according to the law. Honestly, like saying that the person who filed a rape case against you did it too late according to the law doesn't seem like the best defense i don't know and it's not really a good look so following these four lawsuits on december 6 also sean went on instagram where he wrote a statement denying everything as i said and as you'll see he has often accused the people coming out against him of doing that just for money. I personally really hate this type of defense. It's so easy to be like, I have money, so people want to take this money from me. When so often the story is more like, I have money, so I treat people in the worst way possible, but I can get away with it. So I find this excuse extremely lazy and in bad faith and i really don't like it so at the end of 2023 in the weeks following these four lawsuits he started to lose several business partnerships and a reality tv about him and his family was set to be made but the plans were cancelled so we started to see some consequences to all of these allegations on February 26, 2024, we have a new lawsuit. This one was filed by Rodney Jones, aka Lil Road. So he used to work for Sean Conn as a producer in his record company, and he accuses him of sexual misconduct, 
assault and harassment, included groping and touching his butt, trying to groom him in sexual acts with him and members of his team. And he also accuses Sean Combs of forcing him to solicit sex workers who were underage so he could watch what was happening. The lawsuit that he filed also brings up an incident that happened at Chalice Record Studio in September 2022 when there was an altercation between Sean, his son Justin and another man when a man was shot and he is accusing Diddy of not providing enough security for him this night. Following this lawsuit, Sean Holly, Diddy's attorney, denies all of these allegations. So following all of this, on March 20 25th, 2024, the Department of Homeland Security Investigations in New York executed a search warrant and federal agents raided his homes in Miami and LA. These Homeland Security raids were reportedly done in connection to ongoing federal sex trafficking investigations. So here, as you see, it is all getting even more creepy and we were really getting deep into the sex trafficking story. And and basically this gave even more weight to all of the accusations of the sex trafficking going on at his parties and we were starting to see some people wanting to know what was going down and who was attending these parties. And it's very chilling, honestly. On April 4th, 2024, a new lawsuit was filed by Grace Omar K. This one was filed in the state of California. This time, uh, Grace Omar K filed a lawsuit against Christian Combs, Sean Combs' son, Sean Combs, for assault, battery, sexual assault, intentional and negligent inflection of emotional distress. Basically, Grace was a stewardess working on yacht and her yacht company hosted a very private and A-list party. And the court document reports that Grace was pressured by Christian to take shots and then he assaulted her. The court document also alleged that Combs tipped the captain of the judge to make sure that he would not defend Grace. And I just have to mention that. I know that we are talking about very serious topics, but I found it really funny. In the court document, Grace's attorney describes Christian Combs as a 25-year-old, auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. And... This is really funny to me, I don't know. <laughs> Followed by, unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And if everything that is said in these court documents is true, yeah, just throwing a little shade at his rap career. Just like that, you know. Another lawsuit, and I'm not even done here. We have so many lawsuits going on, it is insane. So on May 21st, 2024, Crystal McKinney filed a lawsuit against Sean Combs, accusing him of trying to force her to give him oral sex in the bathroom of a recording studio in New York City. She accuses him of intoxicating her with alcohol and marijuana, which, as she says, could have been laced with narcotics and intoxicating substances. And she reports that she awoke in a taxi after things went down. She also names Bad Boy Records, Universal Music Group and Sean John Clothing, so that's his clothing company, as defendants in this lawsuit. And she accuses these companies of like enabling all of the assaults that Sean Combs allegedly did and maintaining him in a position of power when they knew or should have known that Combs posed a risk of sexual assault. On May 23rd, 2024, another lawsuit was filed by April Lampros. So basically, she was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology in the 90s. And back then, Sean Combs would really try to impress her as the lawsuit document reports. He would offer to mentor her. He would introduce her to many people in the fashion industry. He would try to help her find work. And he even invited her to his Father's Day celebration because he just had had a son and she accuses him of sexually assaulting her in 1995, 1996 on three different occurrences and a fourth time in 2000. She discovered in 2023 that Sean Calm distributed a tape of them having sex and she learned that from a man who allegedly had seen the tape in 1997. And so she filed a lawsuit for 
battery, assault, sexual assault, negligent infliction of emotional distress. I feel like I'm repeating myself so much, but I want to give the precise terms that are used in these court documents. On July 3rd, 2024, we had a lawsuit filed by Adria English, and she is accusing Sean Combs of sex trafficking her. On September 10th, 2024, we have Don Richard filing a lawsuit against him. She was a singer and she accuses Sean Combs of subjecting her to labor trafficking, oppressive working conditions, not being paid, sexual harassment and assault. This is insane. And here, as I am making this video, this is the last lawsuit that was filed. On September 24, 2024, Talia Graves filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of drugging and raping her filming the act and distributing the video. So I wanted to give this timeline of the lawsuits that were filed against him. I wanted to give like the big lines. I didn't get into too much details. I'm sorry, if you want more details, please let me know in the comments. But I just wanted to like summarize all of the ongoing lawsuits against Sean Combs. I hope that these are the last ones that are going to pop, but I think that in the following days or weeks, we could even see more lawsuits, honestly, given the sh crazy number of lawsuits that have been filed against him in the last months. I don't think we're done. I think that for decades he was so powerful in the industry, no one dared coming after him. So honestly, I can only salute the courage of Cassie Ventura for being the first one to take actions against him because she really started a tidal wave of people starting to speak up. And yeah, so we might see even more lawsuits because even more people could have the courage to speak up against him and for what they did to them. Cassie Ventura is the real hero here, in my opinion. So where are we right now and why are we talking so much about PDD? Well, he was arrested on September 16th. So as I am filming this video, it's only been two weeks. So this happened in Manhattan and then it was broken into all the news outlets. On this day, the charges against him were made public and here I'm going to quote Billboard. Federal prosecutors unsealed the indictment this morning after Didi's arrest, revealing that the music mogul was a accused of running a racketeering conspiracy that included sex trafficking, forced labor, bribery, and more. For decades, Sean Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. To do so, Combs relied on the employees, resources, and the influence of his multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled. The following day, on September 17th, he was denied bail, and this happened again on September 18th. And his bail was denied because a federal judge ruled that the indicated rapper and music executive would pose a flight risk and might intimidate witnesses if released. So it really seems like now justice is taking this extremely seriously. But now that justice is taking this seriously and that news outlets are taking this seriously, a lot of people are asking themselves these questions like how could this happen and who knew and who gravitated around him, who participated in his freak offs, who enjoyed all of the terrible actions that he was conducting, especially regarding the sex trafficking. This is coming up so much in the lawsuits so a lot of people are wondering because if he did that it wasn't just for him obviously so now people want to know who did what and the hunt has begun people are looking for who attended his parties how frequently which were the parties where the worst thing were happening and who could have been doing what who was the closest to him it's also crazy to me to see that a lot of people who have gravitated around him have implied stuff in interviews throughout the years that all of this has been playing under the radar so you have those who seem to have been gloating about attending these parties and to have witnessed some crazy things but you have those who 
talk about it and seem to imply that they witnessed things against their will. I think all of this is going to take a long time to be detailed in gold, but that a lot of people are going to do everything they can to brush all of this under the rug. But right now, here are the alleged things that we can talk about regarding the people who gravitated around PDD and who allegedly enabled him or who enjoyed with him all of these crazy stuff happening at these parties and the alleged crimes that he was committing. So in the first place we would have to talk about all of the executives and businessmen who worked with him and enabled him and attended these parties. As some of these alleged victims like reported in their lawsuits there wouldn't have been a way for all of these people working around him to not know what was happening. They definitely have a responsibility in the gravity and extent that these events reached. But we have the big question who attended PDD's freak offs? We can allege from some party invitations, from people talking in interviews, and from pictures of these parties, some kind of list of people who attended them. We don't have information about the extent of their implication in these parties. But here is a list that we can already draw today. We have Leonardo DiCaprio, that DD called himself his number one. Are we surprised with someone as Leonardo DiCaprio, honestly? Jay-Z and Beyonce are mentioned. Jay-Z seemed really, really, really close with him. They worked together and Apparently, uh, I don't know if this is <laughs> completely true, but I've seen this in a video on the matter that is linked in all of my sources. Apparently, Jay-Z was the only person besides Sean Combs' mothers that was allowed to call him by his name, Sean, because they both had the same name. But honestly, for Jay-Z, who has a track record of being very close with young girls and who met his wife, you know, with a certain age gap, are we surprised? We have Ashton Kutcher and in his own At Once interview, he talks about the fact that there's a lot he can't tell about Dee Dee's parties. And you have so many pictures of them together and it like was often said that they were great friends. And honestly, it's so chilling because Ashton Kutcher like used to have a charity to stop like children trafficking. This is so chilling. Other people, A-list celebrities that were close to him involve J-Lo, uh, he dated her. We have Usher that lived with him at the very young age, so we don't really know if things happened against his will or not, I don't know. Some people that you see on pictures at his parties include Bruce Willis, Will Smith, Diana Ross, Owen Wilson. Apparently Anna Wintour attended some of these parties. We have the Kardashians and some other people mentioned that would have had attended these parties include Oprah, Paris Hilton, Howard Stern, Kelly Osbourne, Aretha Franklin, Martha Stewart, Tommy Lee, Pamela Anderson, Regis Fiblin, Vera Wong, Mario Carey, Nick Kinnan, and so on and so on. I am probably missing some people, so if new things came out or like if some of these people have been like completely distanced from the story, please let me know in the comments. At this like time of the video, please let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. And also, if you're still here, please follow me because writing this video really wasn't a pleasure. If you have any other suggestions of topics that you would like to see me cover. Anything that is lighter, I am gladly taking it, but I still wanted to talk about this because this is so serious. I think that everyone needs to know and we need to be careful about who we stand, honestly. Now, this is all alleged at the time that we are. It is only conspiracy theories, but following everything that went down with PDD's arrest, We've had a lot of CEO and execs from huge companies who stepped down. We have Kevin Lillies who stepped down as chairman and CEO of Warner Music's 300 Electra Entertainment. This is not directly linked, but he is someone who has defended Didi when he was accused of sexual harassment and assault. So here we have a connection, I think. We have Nike's CEO, John Donahoe. We don't know if it's linked, of course, but many CEOs stepped down, which is like, are they people who attended these parties or not? 
this is all speculation here so don't take what i'm saying here as the truth all right but we have also the ceo of warner music japan kaz kobayashi sony music nashville ceo randy goodman like people like this who step down from their role and it's really making you wonder is this linked because right now at the state that we are in in this story we know that a lot of people took part into the alleged crimes that happened but we don't know yet who we don't know yet who did what and we can only speculate that a lot of people are trying to cover their tracks right now this is really not a fun topic to talk about but i think it's very important something that comes up a lot when you read the story about shan Combs right now is who could have been other of his alleged victims in the star system and someone that comes up a lot is Justin Bieber because Sean Combs took him under his wing when Justin was very young and starting in the industry and he spent time with him and when you see videos from back then of them together Justin Bieber seems uncomfortable but at the end of the day we don't know if anything happened and Justin like refuse to talk about the situation and right now he wants to focus on his family which honestly I hope he is finding peace whether anything happened to him or he's just linked to that and disturbed by the situation. Now we have the last section of my video it's the question of is this story going to have an impact in Hollywood and the star system and I'm going to be very blunt in this section so if your ego cannot take this I recommend you don't watch the next section <laughs> because I've seen a lot of people on TikTok or YouTube talk about this story and speculate that this could destroy Hollywood and the star system and I have to be honest I'm very pessimistic regarding the impact that all of this could have even if all of the lawsuits come to the conclusion that Sean Combs is guilty of all the things that he is accused of i'm not sure how much is going to reflect on the people who gravitated against him unless we have other lawsuits filed with other defendants because the truth is people in this industry have a lot of power and they have a lot of friends and if they want their friends to stay there or if they want to protect themselves they have the means to do so for a very long time if some people are trying to protect themselves right now if they have the right connections it is likely that they will keep staying rich and living their lavish lifestyle and staying famous and we have to be honest here the public is very much okay with celebrity being creepy i really wish that all of this is going to have an impact and especially that things like trafficking humans won't be able to go on in these A-list circles but come on like how is it that we still have people like Chris Brown at the top of their game like when we know what he did to Rihanna and it was public and she's also an A-list celebrity how are so many people okay with Leonardo DiCaprio having such a creepy dating life the same with Jay-Z come on the truth is that so many people are adamant about defending creepy men when they have power it's honestly brain rot at this point you even see such cultural waves as me too having backlash in real time i won't get into too much details here because i'm going to get mad but we can draw parallels with what happened with jeffrey epstein and only one person really fell in this story it's gislin maxwell he's the only one in prison everyone mentioned in this story we had a-list celebrities men in power we had politicians businessmen and now we just ended the story with Jeffrey killed himself. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist but he either killed himself and regarding everything that he did it was way too easy for him to end it like that or maybe some people tried to make him disappear or he's not dead and he just used his money to keep enjoying his life but now in secrecy and honestly here of course it's conspiracy theory but it's just to show that with people who have so much power and means you can never know how it's going to end but regarding the fact that people's vision of a-list celebrity and the star system has still changed a little bit over the years i can only hope that with people adulating celebrities a little less we as a public are going to not let them get away with so much anymore this is what i dearly hope like if 
the lawsuits against Sean Combs prove him guilty. I really hope that it's going to have an impact. I also see a lot of people praising like Eminem or 50 Cent for talking against him or like saying that they were trying to take him down. But I really want us to remember that the real heroes here are the victims that came forward. You know, when you file a lawsuit that serious and that can relate to such traumatizing events, it takes an amount of courage that most of us will never be able to show. So please, give the flowers to the people who deserve them the most, all right? So here was a broad summary of everything that is happening regarding the arrest of PDD. This is all very bleak and I didn't really enjoy making this video, but this is a topic that is so serious that I think it's important we talk about it. Please remember that until the lawsuits are settled, the things that I've talked about in this video are allegations. Please let me know in the comments of this video what you think about this story, the people involved. Please stay respectful because I will delete all of the comments that are disrespectful to the alleged victims that came forward with the lawsuits. If you want me to make a follow-up video because I'm sure that a lot of new elements are going to appear in the following months, please let me know in the comments. If I have missed anything or gone anything wrong please let me know in the comments i tried to be thorough i'm going to put all my source in the description but yeah if i got anything wrong correct me please i have other less bleak videos that you can watch i have made a deep dive on katy perry's summer shenanigans and another deep dive on chapel Rowan's fandom so if you want to watch other video and deep dives from me you can go watch these but yeah as i like to cover stories from the music industry I couldn't skip this one. If there are any other topics that you would like to see me talk about, please let me know in the comments. Follow me and activate the bell to make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you want to see more content from me, you can follow me on TikTok because I post a lot of more like short content and I post more frequently. And you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see like some private pictures and behind the scenes of my life as a content creator. I was your host Leo and I will see you very soon.